hope you are well, hope you are great. I'm just recovering from the flu. I feel 100% better now so I can record. <laughs> I was just in bed feeling terrible so now I can record. Still a bit under the weather but hey, better than I was. I wanted to come on and speak about an issue that's really been on my mind for a while but I just haven't really spoken about it. And I want to talk about it now because there was a po post that I read recently that kind of refreshed my memory about it so I wanted to come and talk about it and that's just the natural hair community in the UK and this is reflective of brands and events they're the two things that I'm going to talk on. Now the reason I want to talk about it now is because I read a post by Belinda from Be Unique Hair Care on Crystal Afro's um, website United Kingdom I'll leave it down below and you can read it and she was speaking about the lack of support for UK brands and it was a good post because it is something that I have noticed, it's something that I've spoken about before to some people. I'm going to talk from my experiences about this topic and some of the observations I've seen to do with this because I have noticed it as well. Um, as you know, I use a lot of American products for my hair and the reason I do is because before a lot of these brands were around, these were the only brands I knew of and I would purchase from or I'd get my friends in America to send to me. So I got familiar with these brands, so my hair knows what it does and what it doesn't like through these brands. Plus, I've had a lot of these brands contact me to send me stuff and work with them, so I've become accustomed to using these products. And it's only in the last, as to say, two years that I've become aware of the British brands that are here, that are homegrown, that are people making their own products. I purchased from a lot of UK brands for the simple fact of I don't need any new products, okay? If you were to see how many products I have in my house, you'd think I could open my own shop. It's ridiculous, okay? It's just ridiculous. So I only purchase what I really, really need, and that may be mostly things for my body and my hair if they can kind of do a dual purpose but I have no real need for anything new really unless it's a product that I run out of that I really really like i.e like Tresemme Naturals then I don't really have any desire to purchase anything new so that's why I don't really buy anything really other than things that I can make stuff with. Recently I've been in, in um, experimenting with DIY stuff, so I've been buying stuff from like Shea Butter Cottage and stuff, like raw ingredients, but I don't really purchase from anybody regardless of US or UK brands because I just have so much in my house. That's why you don't really see me do a lot of reviews anymore in comparison to what I used to do because I've kind of got what I need now and I know what works and what I like so I don't really do a lot of reviews now unless a company sends me stuff and that is very rare now because I just don't need it. What I find very interesting when it does come to the UK brands is there isn't really a push when it comes to promotion and marketing and advertising and that is something which is very vital especially in the UK because people are aware of US brands because of the internet because of social media and YouTube and blogs a lot of the information we're getting is from America so when you see a lot of bloggers talking about brands that are available in America and they're not here as soon as a UK reader hears that brands come into the UK or it's in the UK they're gonna go and run after it because they've been watching this person for a long time or they've read this blog about such and such as hair results with this product so they're gonna go out and purchase it that is one of the reasons I think that's why people get excited a lot of the UK brands have only really recently popped up in the last two or three years and me personally I haven't seen any major promotion or advertising from these brands unless they're going to be at an event and one of the reasons that I haven't really done a lot of reviews for a lot of UK brands is because one I haven't purchased them which I just told you why. But two, as a blogger, I haven't been contacted to, unless it's been a couple, you see me review a couple brands on this channel, but I don't really get that contact or email to say, hey, I've got a new product out, or hey, there's a new line out, would you be interested in reviewing it for us? Would you? And I think that's a disconnect when it comes to UK brands. I don't feel like the UK brands are really optimising the UK bloggers that they have. They're not really you know, pushing 
that out there to a lot of the UK bloggers and in the last year there's been a massive influx of UK natural hair bloggers so I think it is quite the prime time if you want your products to be promoted on certain platforms to contact people and do collaborations with. If you've noticed in the US whenever there's a new line that comes out that company contacts all the big hair bloggers and everybody knows about this product. Why is the UK not doing that? That is something that needs to happen because there are some great brands out there. There's some amazing people behind these brands, but unless you're in the know, how are you to know? And that is one of the reasons that I feel that you're not getting the same amount of love as the US brands because nobody really knows about who you are. That's the main issue I think that the UK brands have. Some may agree, some, some may disagree, but that is something I've always felt. So I can't talk about things that I don't know about. I can't tell you about things that I have no idea about. And that is one of the reasons why I started my bloggazine UK Afro last year was to help try and push these brands with more promotion and more advertising. The reason I haven't spoken about UK Afro recently is because I'm revamping the whole brand. So that is why I haven't really spoken about it and I will tell you more very soon when that has happened. There is that kind of lack of information from brands in the UK about what your brand is about and what is going on. Unless I know the person or know of the person or know the person personally, if I was a consumer, I wouldn't have a clue about your brand, to be quite honest. I wouldn't know who your brand is or what your brand is or who you are because I haven't seen it and that's just me as as a blogger because I think I have a leg up over the consumer because I'm in this blogging industry those who are not in it and just a you know regular consumer where are they going to get this information from are you advertising in magazines are you advertising through bloggers are you going to events that are not in London and maybe going up north because there are a lot of natural hair women up north who do not have access to these products in local stores and stuff and they, okay, they can purchase online, but then how do they know you exist if you haven't even promoted to them? Like, that is one thing that I think is lacking in the UK brand issue. I mean, in the UK brand's natural hair community, that is one thing I've always said that there needs to be more advertising, promotion and marketing. It's just one thing that lacks so heavily. And there's a lot of brands that I became aware of last year at Natural Hair Week and that's just from going to Natural Hair Week. And that is a source of information. That's great promotion. You know, you're at an event that you can sell to the public and at the same time speak about your product. But that's only so much. Hair sh events and hair shows only do so much, especially when the hair events in the UK are dying, okay? They're dying. Last three years, there were so many hair events and now it's like three events in the year. There's And they seem to be around the same time of the year. So there's not really a lot of times where you can really sell like that to the public. So there needs to be some kind of push of promotional marketing in order to get your products out there and I've always been here as a blogger to use as a platform. Some brands they're more than happy to do collaborations with you and they want to work with you and some brands aren't. I've contacted some brands I don't hear back from them for like three or four weeks or I have no response at all and that's just my personal experience. I've contacted some brands in the UK wanting to do collaborations with them and I've got a very cold response and it's been like well then how do you expect me to support you if you're not really giving me the response that I expect or you know I'm trying to help you help me kind of thing and you don't get that kind of communication so there is a fault there with some brands as well and I have seen other people voice this opinion about different brands but that is to each you know each is each is experience I can't speak for everybody else but I do feel that it is a kind of 50 50 as bloggers we have to try and take on board that there are brands here that we could be helping and could be promoting but then at the same time brands need to be thinking about bloggers that they could be helping and promoting either way so I think that is one issue that we do have and that comes down to marketing and advertising and another thing I would say about the marketing and advertising a lot of UK brands don't have a budget for it so when you are asking for a fee for that because I ask for a fee now because I feel like I've worked to a certain level where I can ask for a fee to do a review because it's a lot of work that goes into doing a review you know you have you get sent product to try that takes four to six weeks of me trying that product to see how my hair reacts to it and how my hair can be put in different styles of the product then after that four to six weeks I have to 
do a video, edit the video, upload the video, promote the video and that in exchange for just a free product to me isn't worth it anymore. When I first started doing vlogging, okay fair enough, I was new, I was trying to get my foot through the door, I get that but now I've worked hard to a certain position. I'm not one of the top natural hair UK bloggers, I understand that but I do feel like I have some kind of credibility behind me and I've done a lot of work over the past two years building my brand and I do feel like I deserve to get paid a fee if I'm going to do promotion, marketing and advertising with or for your brand because it's basic PR. So I think that some brands do not understand that and when I do ask for a fee, which most times for UK brands, if I want to be real, is around £50, I get told, oh, well, I don't usually pay bloggers, oh, that's a bit too much for me. To me, that is like a smidgen of what US bloggers get paid to do reviews. I think that's quite a very, very low price, £50. But, you know, it's all down to your budget and what you can afford and can you afford to pay people that price? Can you not? Do you think it's viable? Do you think that you're going to get some kind of return on it? It all comes down to that person and their business at that time and I understand that but it kind of is one of the issues that I've experienced as a UK blogger and sometimes that kind of coldness doesn't encourage me to want to work with certain brands because of that response I get and with the UK events now nine of them over the last couple of years uh, I think about three four years ago there were events all the time and now there's like four that happen at one time of the year. And it's really sad, especially with the UK being so small. But one thing that I've noticed that's kind of irritating and annoying is this whole, we have the UK's largest, biggest natural hair event. whoop de doo It's like, what, how can every event be the UK's largest hair event? I, someone's lying. It doesn't make any sense. And, I'm kind of getting fed up with this battle of panellists. It's like, who can get the biggest US panellist at their event? It's redundant. It makes no sense. I don't see any value in this battle of events. It's just dumb. Because you don't see that happen in the US. I've never seen people do that. And to see it here, I just don't understand what's going on when the community is so small. It's just stupid. It would be nice if a lot of UK big events were to invest in the UK talent they have, you know, stylists, makeup artists, bloggers, uh, people of interest, whoever it is that you want to, you know, have. It would be nice if they were to invest in the UK talent, but I've only seen a couple of events do that and I don't know what it is if that's their, you know, that's not their agenda, so be it, it's not my event. But it is something I've noticed and it's like, okay, if that's what you want to do, and then the price point I see is like sky high now. It's nearly like £40 for a ticket to go to one of these events. And it's, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that's to fund people's tickets to come over here. I don't know. But it's something I've noticed. And it's just like, well, is it going to get to £50 next year? Like, where is there going to be the cutoff point? And people don't want to pay all that money to come to your event and then have to spend money on products at the event. It's like, I don't know where the viability is in that price. It makes no sense to me. And that's one of the reasons why I'm I'm not going to everybody's event this year because I can't afford to. It's just, what am I really paying for that money for? What am I getting for my money? There has to be something that I'm getting for that money. So I think that is something that I've really noticed with the UK events. And I haven't seen anyone talk about it. I haven't seen anyone, you know, say what is really going on with events in, in whole. I haven't really seen it that. And it would be great if we did have a lot more events like we used to. I am planning some events this year that are going to take place, but a lot of them are not really directly natural hair related. But it would be nice if there were twists and turns of different natural hair themes and events and stuff. But that is down to if people want to do it, I don't know. Or do you feel like there's a need for it anymore? I don't know if people really want to go to hair events no more. I don't know. I don't have a desire to because of I'm a blogger. But a consumer, I don't know if you're looking for events to go to. If you are, let me know. But... It's just something I've noticed and I wanted to kind of like touch on because it, I just think sometimes it's a bit stupid that all this competition, but what for? What are you not really fighting for? What's the prize you're really going for? I don't get it. It's just a bit stupid at times. But um, 
yeah that's my view on the uk natural hair community my main issue with the uk brands is just promotion and advertising and marketing that is it i think once you have that in in place your brand will do well because there are a lot of uk brands regardless of hair like for instance skincare that do amazing so i just think it's about promotion and getting your brand out there and letting people know that you're here that's what it is about instead of you know waiting for people to find you you need to find them so i think that is the main issue with the brands with events it's the whole competition thing and it's just a bit stupid i just don't feel like the uk is as unified as the us when it comes to natural hair there's a lot lacking and that is also bloggers as well there's not a lot of collaborations that go on I don't know what it is I I don't know what it is I don't know if it's ego I don't know if people are busy I don't know if people don't want to do it I don't know but it's something that I have seen happen and I just wanted to come on and talk about it because it has been on my mind for a while but Belinda's article just kind of brought it back up for me so if you are in the UK what are your thoughts on this do you have any thoughts on the uk natural hair community is there anything you've noticed that you wish would change or any tips of improvement you can give to uk brands is there anything that you want to share on this leave your two pence down below and i will speak to you soon bye